I'm Maria, and I'm getting married next week. There's only one big problem. I'm marrying a wonderful man named Andre, and he's a real dreamboat. He's handsome, kind, and he always makes me laugh. He's the ideal man that I've dreamed about since I was a little girl. I couldn't believe it when he asked me out, and we were happily dating ever since. It was the happiest time of my life, being with him. Then one day, Andre invited me to meet his parents. I'm so nervous. I hope they like me. Don't worry. If you just be your usual self, I'm sure they'll see how amazing you are. Oh, thanks, Andre. We reached his parents' place, and they welcomed us in for some tea and snacks. I won't lie, I was nervous. Really nervous. I almost spilled my tea all over myself a couple of times. But somehow, I managed to keep my cool and not embarrass myself. So, Maria, what exactly is it you do? Oh, I'm a writer. I write for a webcomic online. Really? And you make enough money doing your little comic to support my son? Well, I make quite a bit, I think. I mean, it isn't anything crazy, but if the comic gets really popular, the author promised us all a large pay raise. Oh, I see. So it's a fun side project. That's cute. So what do you actually do for work? I just told you. I work on a webcomic. It's a more popular one, so I get a decent salary. And I do some commissions on the side to help pay my bills so I don't have any other job. I see. So you are unemployed then. What a pity. I just told you I have a job. Listen, Mom. Let's just drop it, all right? She had enough money to pay for our needs, and I have a great job too. So we don't have to worry about our finances. She dropped it after that. But all night she'd drop hints about how poor she thought I was. But it was true that I had a job. She just didn't understand what I did for a living. Especially after she found out that worked from home. Her attitude seemed to change for the worse. Oh, so why didn't you just say you were too lazy to get a job? My son is out there every day working hard to support you both, and you're just doodling at home. So ungrateful. I bet my son bought the very dress you're wearing today. I couldn't stand it. She'd been insulting me all night, and now she was just being plain rude. I had enough, and I was about to give her a piece of my mind when Andre stood up before I did. That's enough. I love her, and she has a wonderful job as a comic illustrator. So you can just shut your mouth and stop insulting my girlfriend. That sure shut her up. She just gawked at Andre, surprised that her own son would tell her to shut up. We left after that, and I fell even deeper in love with my boyfriend. The next day I got a call from her. I'm so sorry for how I acted yesterday. I suppose I was out of line to say such things to you, but I just want what's best for my son and I don't want him falling in love with a no good freeloader. I'm sure you understand, don't you? I guess. This isn't the best apology I've ever heard though. Oh good, I'm glad we came to this understanding. So you're going to break up with him, right? Excuse me? Well, you just agreed that he shouldn't be with a freeloader. He's got so much potential and he needs someone that should support him in that. Obviously that person isn't you, so you should stop playing your silly game and go find someone else to mooch off of. I was fuming mad. Even when she apologized, she was still being a jerk. I told her that I was going to date Andre whether she liked it or not because we loved each other. If she wanted to come between us, that would be her own funeral. I hung up on her before she could respond, but I decided to keep the phone call a secret from Andre. I didn't want him getting a bad relationship with his mother just because we didn't like each other. The weeks passed, and I didn't see much of his mother since then. After our first meeting, Andre was fine to visit his parents without me, and I was perfectly happy not to see them again either. His father was pleasant enough, but whenever his mother spoke, it made me very angry. Soon, Andre proposed to me. It was a beautiful moment. He got down on one knee after taking me to a beautiful bridge. Of course I said yes, and we started to plan the wedding right away. Everything started falling into place as the wedding day approached. We got the perfect venue, a beautiful scenic gazebo overlooking the beach, and I even got a wedding dress that looked perfect on me. I was all set to marry the love of my life. But that's when everything started going wrong. A few days before the wedding, I got a call from the band we had hired to play. They apologized, but they said they had another offer that was much better than ours, and they really needed the money. I was sad and very annoyed, but having no band wasn't the end of the world. Then, later that day, I got another call. The venue we had booked was taken too. 
Someone had come in and offered to pay double our amount for it. Finally, the rotten cherry on top of this whole disaster cake. The dress shop called and said that a previous customer had just spilled wine all over the dress I had set aside, and it would take a week at least to send it to the cleaners. After hearing this, I couldn't hold my tears back anymore. Everyone was coming for our wedding and nothing was ready for it. We didn't have any place to get married. I didn't have my dress and we couldn't afford another nice church on such short notice. I broke down crying. My perfect day was absolutely ruined. As I cried on my bed, Andre found me. I just got a text from my mom apologizing that the wedding was off. What's that about? Well, someone booked up our venue and band and my dress is ruined. There can't possibly be a wedding now. Those things don't matter to me. I love you, and I still want to marry you even if there's no church or dress or band. Besides, we can save all that money for a great honeymoon anyway. Just the two of us. I dried my tears as I realized that Andre was right. It wasn't about the dress or the gazebo or any of that. We were still getting married no matter what. So I texted his mom to clear up the confusion. I apologize for any misunderstanding, but the wedding is still going on. We'll meet at the small local church down the street for the service and I'll send directions. Of what? But you don't have your dress or the venue or anything. I took it all away from you, but you're still marrying my son? Impossible. Suddenly, it all made sense. It was her that spilled the wine and rebooked my band and venue. She had tried to ruin our wedding, but lucky for us, none of that stuff mattered anyway. I could imagine how furious Andre's mom had to be after spending thousands of dollars on the band and venue only for us to still get married. We had the ceremony, and it was a lot of fun. My whole family showed up, and so did all of his. Well, almost all. We got married without any of the fancy things we had planned, but it didn't matter since we loved each other. We noticed that my mother-in-law didn't show up for the wedding, though. Andre was beyond disappointed and very upset. I called her before the wedding and she refused to come. She wanted no part in this horrible arrangement. She had even tried to stop the rest of Andre's family from attending too. Luckily, they didn't listen to her whining though. After the wedding though, Andre got another call, but this one was from his father. He explained that my mother-in-law had spilled her drink and ruined my wedding dress, but refused to pay for it. The dress shop was pressing charges in court to try and get the money out of her but she'd already spent most of their money on rebooking all the things for my wedding and didn't even have enough to pay them. He begged Andre for money, but he refused. She didn't want any part of our marriage, so we weren't going to bail her out of the mess she created. He apologized to his father, then hung up. We haven't heard much from them since, but the bill from the court case, the dress, the venue, and the band must have been crazy expensive. She has to work two jobs now just to try and pay off all her debts. But Andre and I have a happy life without them in it. Let me start out by saying that I'm not someone who gets upset easily. But my mother-in-law always knew just how to get under my skin and leave me bubbling with anger. My husband's mother had always hated me for some reason. Even though I'd never done anything that could have possibly upset her. Every time she'd see me, she'd always make rude comments towards me. One day we went to her house for a barbecue, and as soon as she saw me, she said, Wow, you've certainly gained a few pounds. Whenever this happened, I'd only smile and pretend I hadn't heard any of the comments she'd make towards me. Of course, by the time we'd leave, I'd be upset and on the verge of tears. Strangely enough, neither my husband nor my father-in-law ever noticed anything. Whenever I tried to talk to my husband about it, he would say, Why would my mom ever do that? You're just being dramatic. After a while, I stopped trying to convince people about what she was doing and how it made me feel. I started to believe that maybe... that it was all in my head and that I was just being dramatic. After all, nobody else thought the remarks she made toward me were concerning. Of course, because of this, her behavior towards me only worsened. Whenever my husband and I were invited over to their house, it seemed as if my mother-in-law would always find excuses to have me do chores for her. Oh, now look what you've done, you brainless girl. You've brought dirt into the house. I had no idea what she was talking about, as I had never brought dirt in since my shoes were spotless. And I always made a point to never make a mess when I was at her home. Despite this, she would always hand me a broom or a cloth and tell me to get to work cleaning. On top of that, whenever she served us food, everyone would get delicious, warm, home-cooked meals, and I would get half-frozen microwave dinners. 
I would look over to my husband, who never paid me any mind as he ate his food. Sorry, dear. I just didn't make enough food for you. Again. But of course, you really don't need the extra calories anyways now, do you? No matter how many people were at the house for dinner, there would never be enough food for me. I would always be stuck with frozen meals. It was so obvious she was doing this on purpose. There was no way she'd accidentally make just enough food for everyone but me this many times. Obviously though, I would never say anything against her. At that point, my husband had convinced me that I was the rude one. In fact, he had convinced me that I was crazy for suspecting my mother-in-law for purposely doing all these things to me. After all, who was I to question his mother? You're being too sensitive. If you keep complaining about my mom, I'll divorce you. She's never done anything wrong. When he said this, I broke down crying. I couldn't take it anymore. It felt like everyone in his family was against me. I had never felt so alone before. It was like I had no one on my side. I didn't know what to do, so I turned to the one person that I knew would help me. I wiped away my tears and walked into an empty room where my husband couldn't hear me and called the one person that would support me. Hi mom, it's me. I really need your help right now. Talking with my mom helped me to feel more confident, and I knew exactly what I had to do. She assured me that I had been right and that what my mother-in-law was doing was definitely on purpose. It felt good to be believed and know that I wasn't in the wrong for being upset. Together, we came up with a plan to get her to confess to what she had been doing to me. I knew that for my own sanity, I had to prove to the rest of my husband's family that I was right. And so I asked my husband if we could have dinner with her parents. Honey, do you think your mom would like to have dinner with us tonight? Well, I see you finally come to your senses. I'll give her a call and ask. And so my plan was put into motion. That evening, before we went over for supper, I made sure to wear the nicest outfit I owned and told my husband to do the same. Trust me, tonight is a special occasion. I'll be making a special announcement at dinner, so we'll need to look our very best. Once we were dressed in our best outfits, we went over to my mother-in-law's house and were greeted at the door by both her and my father-in-law. Upon seeing our outfits, visible uncertainty crossed her face. Oh, what's with the fancy getup? Some sort of celebration going on that you haven't told us about? She shifted uncomfortably before stepping aside and letting us in. I couldn't help but grin. All these years of her making me uncomfortable and now... Oh, how the tables have turned. And yet the fun was only beginning. Did you need help with any chores? I know getting things done around the house can be difficult for someone of your age. I smiled innocently as my mother-in-law sputtered, trying to think of a response. She frantically looked around the room, trying to think of something, anything that she could make me do, but she couldn't come up with anything. She only huffed and walked away embarrassed as I continued grinning. Everything was going perfectly so far. At last, it was time to eat. As expected, I was given frozen food, but I didn't let it bother me. Instead, I smiled and ate what was given to me without complaint. Across the table, I could see my mother-in-law staring at me, slack-jawed. I knew she could tell something was up. This was the first time ever I'd seemed genuinely happy to be eating what she'd given me. I smugly looked back at her, chomping on the frozen peas in the package, along with something I could only assume was meatloaf. After a few minutes, I stood up and addressed everyone. Attention, my beloved family. I have a very special announcement to make this evening. Is it really that special? Huh? Her sudden question broke my stride, but undeterred I brushed it off as just another attempt to get under my skin and continued. As I was saying, I, no, we have a very special announcement, I said while pulling my very confused husband up to stand with me. We, we do? Yes, we do. We've been keeping a very, very special secret from all of you. And now we feel it's best to let you all know. I'm pregnant. Silence fell over the dinner table. Everyone looked at one another, as if waiting for someone to react first. Once the initial shock of the announcement wore off, my mother-in-law leaped up from her seat in excitement. I'm going to be a grandma. Oh, this is the best day of my life. She ran up to me, hugging me and crying. She blubbered out how much she was sorry for the way she'd been treating me and how wrong she was to do so. Everyone else stared at her in shock and horror. Here she was, a crying mess, openly admitting to harassing me for the past few years in front of everybody. As calmly as I could, I slid out of her embrace and stepped back. You won't be seeing my child, not after everything you've done to me. In fact, none of you will, especially you. 
I pointed to my husband as I said the last part. He was speechless and struggling to find his voice after what I had just told him and the rest of his family. We're done. You were just as bad as her. Actually, you were worse as you were incredibly dismissive of me and my feelings, and for that, you'll not be forgiven. With that, I stormed out of the house and got into the car. Seconds later, my husband came running out, crying and begging me not to go. Please, please, I'm so sorry for not believing you. Please don't leave. I promise I'll change. I'll get better just for you. You had your chance. You brought this on yourself. And with that, I drove away. I left him and his horrible family behind while I began preparing to move in with my mother. Just like that, I never saw my husband again. As for the baby, well, there never was one. It was simply a white lie that I used to have that horrible woman confess to her wrongdoings. From that point on, my life started getting better. I was much happier living with my mom and a lot less stressed. It felt good leaving the way I did, and I truly felt that they got what they deserved. Honestly, I'm really glad everything worked out in my favor and I was able to move on to a better life. Thanks for watching. Like the video for the algorithm. So after you hear my story, you might be confused as to why I'm such a happy person. You see, growing up, my sister Mary and I lived in a small town. Our parents were kind and loving people. They always made sure that we were happy. And although we weren't wealthy, they had a way of making money stretch so that all our needs were taken care of. Unfortunately, when I was 14 and my sister was 12, they were involved in a terrible accident. They were out running errands and were driving on the highway when their car hit a patch of ice and spun out and caused a massive car accident. Losing our parents at such a young age was almost too much for us to take, but we still had each other. And while we were close, we did become even closer as a result. Not only were we siblings, but we became best friends as well. Not long after the funeral, our grandparents took us in and did their best to fill our parents' roles to the best of their abilities. It was a huge adjustment, but we leaned on each other for support and guidance, and both of us managed to do well in school. We both went to university and graduated at the top of our respective classes. I became a civil engineer, while my sister became a pharmacist. Sadly, our grandparents passed away soon after we graduated, once again leaving us alone. Being orphaned for the second time in our young lives was hard to handle, but we did our best to persevere. Between the money from our new careers and the inheritance that we received from both our parents and now our grandparents, we were able to buy a house and a car for each of us. For some siblings, this would have been an awkward situation, but we didn't mind. The house that we bought was big enough that we barely saw each other. I mainly lived on the first floor while my sister lived on the second. For a while, we focused on our careers and were happy, until once again, tragedy paid us a visit. I was inspecting a high-rise that I had helped to design when a crane operator hit the building above me and caused some building materials to fall and land on me. All I can remember is looking up and seeing wood and steel falling above me, and then waking up in the hospital. Thankfully, I recovered, but my spine had been severely damaged. With a lot of physical therapy, I would be able to one day be able to stand and walk short distances, but I would need a wheelchair for the rest of my life. For months, I was depressed, but Mary lifted my spirits. She took care of me and kept pushing me to do my best with my physical therapy. If it weren't for her, I'm not sure that I would ever walk again. I was so grateful for her. A few years later, though, I'm sorry to say that I was shocked to hear what would normally be happy news. Henry, I have some great news. Oh, what's that, sis? I've been seeing this boy, Jared, and last night he proposed to me and I said yes. Henry, I'm getting married. I know that I should have been excited for her, but unfortunately, all I could think about was that I would be all alone, that there was a chance that I might lose my best friend. Thankfully, though, I chased those feelings away, as I knew that Mary had always been there for me, and even if she got married, none of that would change. And so I began to feel just as excited as she felt, and I cheered the wondrous news. A week later, she introduced me to her new fiancé. And at first he seemed okay, but there were subtle things that made me question if he was the right one for her. Henry, this is my fiancé, Jared. Hello, Jared. It's a pleasure to meet you. Um, yeah. 
It's nice to meet you too. So, um, Mary was saying that since your parents are dead, that she wanted you to walk her down the aisle for the ceremony. With your chair, how are you supposed to be able to do that? Well, I can actually walk short distances, but it takes a lot out of me. Oh, I see. Yeah, it will be beautiful, and it will mean a lot to me too. Plus, he can lean on me for support as well. I don't think Mary saw it, but Jared made a face when she said this. If he was trying to hide his disgust of my wheelchair, then he wasn't hiding it very well. The weeks passed, and the two of them discussed more of the wedding plans. A few times, Jared asked if Mary didn't want his father to walk her down the aisle instead, but she was adamant that I do it. I honestly felt like he was embarrassed that I would be a part of the ceremony. During this time, Jared moved in with us and began to make quite the mess around the house. He would even leave dirty dishes in my portion of the house. I tried to bring this up to Mary, but she just brushed it off. Between work and planning for the wedding, she was doing all that she could, and so I made plans to speak with Jared and establish some ground rules. Feeling confident, I went into the living room to speak with him, but he was nowhere to be seen. He did, however, leave his cell phone on the couch. Normally, I would never dream of looking at someone else's phone, but it was vibrating like crazy. I was curious, and so I picked it up and saw that he had received several messages from two different women, one named Wanda and the other Stacy. I know that I shouldn't have read their messages, but I needed to know who they were, and they both were thanking him for the lovely gifts that he had given them, and for the amazing dates that he was taking them on. I could tell that neither knew about the other, and I definitely suspected that my sister didn't know about them. Suddenly I heard someone coming down the stairs and I braced myself to confront Jared about how he was treating my sister, when both my sister and Jared came into the room. Jared, do you have something to tell my sister? Maybe you would like to introduce her to Wanda, or maybe to Stacy. Oh Henry, what on earth are you talking about? You see? This is why I don't want his crippled butt at the wedding. He's trying to wedge himself in between us. He can't stand that we're happy and that he isn't, so he is trying to break us up. Henry, please tell me this isn't true. Of course it isn't. I've only ever wanted you to be happy. But not only does he hate me just because I'm crippled, but he's also cheating on you too. I quickly threw Jared's phone to Mary, who looked at it and instantly got angry once she started reading the messages. Hey, that's my phone. How dare you look at it? Before my sister could respond, Jared slapped her so hard, she fell to the floor and then grabbed his phone. It looked like he was going to hit her again, so I quickly wheeled over and began punching him. While I may be stuck in a wheelchair, I do have very strong arms, and after hitting him a few times, he got scared and then ran out of the house. Once, I was able to calm my sister down and make sure that she wasn't seriously hurt. We called the police and reported that Jared had assaulted my sister. It didn't take long for the police to find and arrest him, as it turned out, this hadn't been the first time that he had assaulted a woman before. This made the judge that was assigned to his case very strict on him, and he was sentenced to As five for my years sister, in prison. She was devastated, but of course she called off the wedding after learning what kind of man that Jared truly was. Heartbroken, she leaned on me, and I did my best to support her through the healing process. The one positive thing that I took away from this, though, was that I was a bit too reliant on the idea that it would always be just my sister and I. And so, even though it was difficult, I moved out and got a house of my own. This opened up a lot of doors for both of us, and I'm happy to say that not long afterwards that Mary met someone amazing who treated her like a queen. We even became good friends as well. As for me, well, it took a bit longer, as I'm very shy, but I'm happy to say that I recently got engaged, and you would never guess what happened. Since Mary had pushed me so much with my physical therapy, not only was I able to walk her down the aisle for her wedding to her new boyfriend, but I did so for my own as well. In fact, I no longer even need my wheelchair. My future has never looked brighter. Thanks for watching, like, share, and subscribe. My name is Juno, and I haven't had the easiest life. Growing up, my parents always treated my older brother Jeff and me differently. While I would get scolded for anything that I did, he was always praised. If he broke something, my parents would blame me, even if it was obvious that I had done nothing wrong. They always favored Jeff because he was smart and looked exactly like our father, whereas I didn't look like either of my parents. 
even when we occasionally got into fights. Our parents always would take Jeff's side despite the fact that most of the time, he would hit me, and I never retaliated. My family owned a corporation that manufactured car parts, and my father was the CEO, while my mother handled the finances. Even though they made good money, I knew that they would never pay for my college tuition, so I made plans to find a job once I graduated high school. I knew that it would be hard for me to make enough money to live off of and go to school, but I also knew that it would be worth it. But then, one day my parents came home and sat me down. Listen, Juno, your mother and I have made a decision about your future. My heart skipped a beat. I was skeptical about what they were going to say, but I was also incredibly hopeful that they might tell me that they would pay for my schooling. Yes, this is very good news. You are young, but we have made arrangements for you to be married. You can't be serious? How could you do this to me? Oh, we are serious and you've been useless. This arranged marriage will benefit our company as we are marrying you to the niece of the owner of Timo Corporation. They are one of our biggest clients. But I'm 18. What if I don't love this woman? What's the problem? I assumed you would be interested in being set up with an older woman. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. But the next day, they told me to clean up and then get dressed in a brand new suit that they had bought for me. Looking in the mirror, I was amazed to see how well it fit and how distinguished it made me look. They even bought me hair products and cologne to use. Later that day, we drove over to a mansion with a tall gate surrounding it. Once inside, we were escorted to a room where a large woman was sitting waiting for us. Hello there. Oh my, but aren't you the handsome young man? You will be marrying my niece Kendra, although I'm sure she wouldn't mind if I had a bit of fun with you too. So then this will make things between our companies square. Yes, yes. I will sign off on the contracts and give you more work and the debt that you accumulated will be forgiven as well. I wouldn't normally let so much money go, but hopefully this handsome and energetic young man will make up for it. I can't wait to get him upstairs. I was mortified. I had never met a woman who was so lecherous. Shocked, I tried to get my parents' attention so that I could get out of this situation, but they ignored me. Suddenly a pair of security guards showed up and escorted me to a large room on the second floor. Once we were alone, Beatrice began to act even more inappropriately. Oh yes, you are a handsome thing. She slowly began to approach me, and I didn't like the look in her eyes. Just before she was about to lay a hand on me though, I heard a call through the door. Hello Aunt Beatrice, are you in there? Oh damn, well young man, maybe we'll have some fun later. Yes, Kendra, please come in. Hello, um, who is this? This is your new husband. Husband, are you serious? Yes, it's well past time that you were married. People will think something is wrong with you that you are 25 and unmarried. Um, what is your name and how old are you? My name is Juno and I'm 18. 18? Aunt Beatrice, are you crazy? What's the problem? He is young and full of energy and he's handsome as well. If you're truly unhappy, then just enjoy him for a few years and then find someone else. I can't believe you. That's the reason that you've never been married. You treat men like napkins. You use them and discard them without a care in the world. I didn't know what to say, but the way that Kendra looked at her aunt, I knew that something was up. They had a very strained relationship. I was worried that Kendra would be very similar to her aunt, but over the next few months as I got to know her, she was actually very kind and had a good heart. Some nights she would come home late from work and I would prepare a meal and we would talk the whole night about our interests and what we did that day. I found her work so incredibly fascinating and I admired her work ethic. Slowly we got to know each other and found out that we had the same taste in music, books and TV shows. Although it had been arranged against my will, I was actually beginning to fall for Kendra. I later found out that Kendra's parents had owned the company she worked for and that they had passed away when she was very young. Her aunt had taken over since she was too young to run the company. Thankfully, Kendra constantly put herself between her aunt and me. More than once, her aunt Beatrice tried to get me alone with her, 
but Kendra always made sure that it didn't happen. I know some guys would jump at the chance to be with an older woman, but I had no interest in Beatrice, especially since I was falling for Kendra, although I didn't say anything. One day, she came home rather upset, and I tried to comfort her. What's wrong, Kendra? Did you have a bad day? Oh, hello there, Juno. Yeah, it was a really tough one. I wish I could tell you more, but I can't at the moment. But don't worry. I have a plan to make sure that this will be my last tough day. I didn't understand what she meant, and she wouldn't elaborate. It was hard, but I had faith that she knew that what she was That night we curled doing. up on the couch and watched movies to relax. A few nights later, I was home alone when I heard the front door open and close. Thinking that it was Kendra coming home, I went to greet her and was shocked to see that it was Beatrice. Uh, there's the young man that I want. How did you get in here? I have a spare key, of course. Now come here. My niece can't be the only one that has some fun with you. Stop it. Please, I'm with Kendra and this is wrong. Are you sure? Because if you turn me down, I can end all the contracts with your parents' company and they will go bankrupt. Besides, I always get what I want. Before she could lay a hand on me, Kendra burst into the room. Stop it, Aunt. No, I will not. How dare you deny me what I want? I'm your boss, and if I hadn't taken care of you after your parents passed away, then you would be on the street. That won't fly anymore. As of this afternoon, the board of trustees voted you out. You've kept me from taking over the company for too long. They chose me to replace you. You can't be serious. I won't allow you to take the company from me. You have no say in the matter. The board discovered all the illicit things you've been up to, bribing, embezzling money, and fraud. I've been waiting for this opportunity for a while. Just then, two police officers came into the room and dragged Beatrice out. It turned out that Kendra had been investigating Beatrice and found that she was doing many illegal things with the company and its money and had worked both with the board of trustees and the police to end her tyranny. As a result, she was finally able to take control of the company as she was supposed to all along. And Juno, I got you this. She hesitantly pulled divorce papers out of a pocket in her suit jacket. I know this isn't the ideal situation for you. With this, you can do whatever you like. To be honest, though, that isn't what I want. I would much prefer to stay with you. Are you sure? You don't mind that I'm older and kind of a workaholic? Not at all. The time that we've spent together has made me realize that I have fallen in love with you. I could tell by the look in her eyes that she felt the same and with joy, she tore up the paperwork and we kissed. The months that followed were filled with a lot of hard work. Kendra made it her mission to clean up the company and remove all of the illegal activity that her aunt had been involved in. Part of that affected my family's business as well though. It turned out that they were involved in a lot of bribery and Kendra refused to do business with them anymore. My parents tried to call me and get me to convince Kendra to change her mind, but I blocked their number and ignored them. There was no way that I was going to jeopardize my marriage for them. After all, they sold me off, and even though it was turning out to be the best thing to ever happen to me, I still resented them for it. Months later, I found out that they ended up having to sell off their company as they were bankrupt and were forced to even sell their home as well. The last thing that I heard was that they were buried in debt and that both my parents and brother were living paycheck to paycheck in a small dirty apartment in a bad neighborhood. And as for Beatrice, well, she was sentenced to 20 years in prison for all the crimes that she had committed. As for me, Kendra paid for me to go to college, and after I graduated, I joined her company as an accountant and eventually worked my way up to be the head of finances. It was quite rewarding. And even though my wife owned the company, I was never shown favoritism and had to work hard to prove myself, which I found rewarding. Today, we couldn't be happier. And not only has our company grown, but our family has as well. We have a wonderful son and are expecting a daughter any day now. Thanks for watching. Please like the video for the algorithm. I had always wanted to work for my father's company. He had always made it look so glamorous. The way he walked around looking confident in his fancy suit and the way he effortlessly spoke to people. 
It made me want to grow up and be the exact same, but I knew that he hadn't become such a successful person overnight. I knew that he had started at the bottom of the company and had worked hard over the years until one day he became the CEO of the company. Knowing this, I wanted to do the same. And so I asked him if I could have a job, but that I wanted to start as a basic employee and that I didn't want anyone to know that he was my father. He found this idea hard at first since he didn't want to see me struggle, but he knew that it would be the best for me as it would teach me invaluable skills and experiences. And so I started out in an entry level position and just as my father promised, no one knew who I was. It was hard at first, but my coworkers were amazing and helped me out so much. I felt that I was actually finding my place in the world and that I was already learning so much that would help me in the future. At least I did until my boss took notice of me. When I had been hired and assigned to his team, he had been away on vacation. So for my first two weeks on the job, I had never met him. The day he came back, I walked into the office and saw him chatting with some of the other people on my team. Yeah, it was such a great vacation. The room and the flight were very expensive, but hey, you only live once, right? Plus, we have so many amazing photos that I can't wait to show you guys. I could tell by the looks on people's faces that they were humoring him. More than a couple kept glancing at their phones or watches to check on the time. To me, this was a bit of a red flag, as it appeared that my boss didn't have as good of a relationship with his subordinates as he believed. As I walked up and greeted everyone, the way that he looked at me made me feel uncomfortable. He was leering at me and barely hid the fact that he was staring at my body. I could feel him undressing me with his eyes and it made my skin crawl. I wanted to walk away, but I knew that I had to introduce myself to him. Good morning, everyone. I take it that you're Ben, right? It's nice to meet you. Yes, I am. You must be Sam. It's nice to meet you as well. I'm sorry that I was away on vacation when you were hired. I typically have a meet and greet with new employees. When you have free time later, please come visit me in my office. Later in the day, I did visit Ben's office. As soon as I entered his office, he began to leer at me again. He moved over and closed the door behind me before motioning for me to sit on a couch near to his desk. I sat down next to him, but I tried to keep some distance between us. Come here, Sam. Sit here next to me. Come now. How on earth did they hire such a pretty young thing as you? Excuse me? Oh, there's no need to be coy. It's just the two of us here. So tell me a bit about yourself. Are you married? Do you have a boyfriend? I didn't like the way he stared at my body. And as he spoke, he shifted closer to me. No, I'm single. Oh, that's a pity, but maybe it's not. You really are a lovely girl. How do you feel about older men? He reached over and placed a firm hand on my knee. The touch of his hand on my skin made my blood run cold. Before I could reply, there was a knock on his door, followed by the door opening and his secretary entering, carrying a stack of paperwork that she then placed on his desk. Seeing this as my chance to leave, I stood up quickly and made my way out of his office. Um, thank you for the conversation, but I see that you have lots of work to do, and I really do need to get back to my desk. Before he could respond, I left and went back to do my work. I did my best to avoid him for the rest of the day, but he kept calling my desk and leaving messages. He kept asking me to go to his office to finish our meeting, but I chose to ignore them. I wasn't sure if that would get me into trouble, but there was something about the way he was acting that made me feel very defensive. That night I went home, and my father asked me how work was. I told him that everything was going well. It bothered me to lie to him, but I didn't want him to come to my rescue. It was very important for me to make it on my own. The next day when I arrived in the office, I found a large stack of paperwork on my desk and a note that stated that it needed to be finished before I went home for the day. Looking at it, I knew that it would take all day and would require that I stay late. Although I was annoyed, I knew that this was just a part of the job, and so I got to work. As the pile began to shrink, I noticed the people around me going home for the day, leaving me alone in the office. Exhausted but undeterred, I decided that I needed something to keep me awake, so I went to the kitchen to get a cup of coffee to help me power through the rest of the paperwork. As I stood waiting for the coffee to brew, I felt someone walk up behind me and wrap their arms around me. My body went stiff as I felt my boss pressed up against my back. I see you're working late tonight. I'm sorry about that, but it was the only way that I could get some alone time with you. After all, we didn't finish our conversation from yesterday. Please let go of me. I'm sorry, but I'm not interested. Oh, don't be like that. Come on now. Don't pretend that you're not curious about what it would be like to be with your boss. 
You know I control your future here at the company? One word from me, and you could be fired. But if you do as I want, then I can get you raises or promotions. It all depends what you're willing to do. I pleaded. I felt his hands move over my body, squeezing me and slowly trying to take my clothes off. With little effort, he ripped my shirt open, and before I knew what I was doing, I grabbed the cup of coffee and threw it over my shoulder into his face. He screamed out in pain and let go of me, giving me the chance to run out of the kitchen to the elevator. As I ran, though, I heard him recover and then chase after me, screaming that he would make me pay for denying him. But thankfully, I made it to the elevator before he caught up to me. Thinking quickly, I decided to go up to the top floor instead of down, and I was grateful to see my father there. Frightened, I told him everything that had happened. His face grew visibly angry the more I told him. I see. Please let me make a few phone calls. Patiently, I watched him call security and instruct them to find Ben and detain him. He then told them to make copies of the office security tapes and to send them to the police immediately. Every floor had cameras, and there was one in the kitchen where Ben had attacked me. The next few weeks were a bit of a blur. Ben was caught before he could leave the building, and they escorted him right into the waiting arms of the police. Thankfully, between my testimony and the security tapes, it was all the evidence the police needed to charge him with sexual assault. Word spread around the office about Ben being arrested, and it ended up having a positive effect. Feeling empowered knowing that someone had stood up to him, other women in the office came forward with their own stories about Ben, and multiple charges of assault were brought against him. Ben ended up going to prison for many years. However, that wasn't the end of Ben's suffering. His wife, upon hearing how much of a monster her husband was, divorced him. Because he was in prison, the judge ruled entirely in her favor. So even after he got out of prison, he wouldn't have a house to go home to. My father, of course, also fired him and made sure that no one in our city would ever hire him again. He had become blacklisted. As for me, I managed to keep who I was a secret somehow. And while it was difficult to do, I returned to work. For months, I did feel uneasy and anxious, but it passed and I was able to feel safe at work. Slowly over the years, I learned more and more and rose up the ranks in the company until I became a board member. It was only then revealed who I was, and since I was only a stone's throw away from being the CEO once my father retired, everyone around me respected me. At the moment, my father isn't ready to retire, but I don't mind. I've worked hard for everything that I have, and I'm proud and happy that I didn't take the easy way to get here. Thanks for watching. Please like the video for the algorithm.